Cadillac here. Stay with me, Jack. April in St. John's, Newfoundland, as Saku and I prepare for our expedition across the island. It's been a long two years waiting, but now the chips are finally in place. Our starting point is Robinson's on the west coast of the Canadian province. Here, spring is in the air, but a different story was unfolding in the mountains that lay ahead. For now, we take a couple days to become better acquainted with living life out of a bag. Our first stop is down the old Newfoundland Railway to spend some time on the Robinsons River before heading into the country. So me and Saku are here now, and it's uh, it's day one. We've uh, we've dropped off for around five or six hours now, and Saku's over there chewing on a piece of wood. Uh, we have a few days here in Robinsons in the St. George's Bay area. Uh, we're going to get some kinks out of the system, and then we're going to be on our way into the western interior of Newfoundland. Being only an eight-month-old Cape Shore water dog, Saku has lots to learn, but is more than willing. Good boy, come on Saku, good boy. I'll carry one large pack of gear, including my food and some of Saku's. A tent and tarp will be our shelter from the harsh northern elements. Saku will also carry his weight with a professional pack. Critical thought was put into every item chosen. First, we had 12 kilometers to cover up the Trans Canada Highway. Here now, we're on the side of the TCH. That's uh, not very exciting. It's almost as exciting as watching paint dry, but not quite. Not quite as good. Yeah, so me and old Sack just uh, made it up here to the Robinson's Forest Pasture Road. Uh, we're off that bloody highway now. Waiting for us was a sled and snowshoes, which would soon come in handy. So two things just happened. This happened, and then this happened. 
taking the sleigh to the high roads. Because we're sleeping on snow this evening, uh, you know, just to, to keep a bit of heat and, uh, and not lose it to the ground, I'm just going to put a sheet of boughs down underneath the tent. And uh, from that way, we'll get a bit of insulation. With Mother Nature on my mind, I kept these same boughs on my sled for several campsites. Shafu loves the bow bed. God love him. Look him over. Big first day. boy, Shafu. Proud of you, bud. Tent for the evening now. Now we were on the fringe of the mountains that awaited us. Uh, so it's uh, day two here of the trip, and uh, it's a beauty. I mean, it's cold, minus seven, minus eight, uh, you know, for this time of year. But uh, it's it's what you can expect when you're up in the Long Range Mountain area. I can see those in the distance, and man, they look beautiful. So we're looking to follow up uh, yesterday's effort with another big one today, and uh, we look to get say 20 kilometers, I'd be happy with that, uh, 15, eh, so so, and uh, if I were to go 25, it would be unbelievable, but uh, you know, just trying to ease ourselves into the expedition here. on the menu tonight a little bit of uh, three cheese chicken pasta looks like it's gonna be delicious ah, day three and I'm back at her uh, I think I get a little sunburn yesterday Whew. the face especially forehead stinging today uh, the sun was beaming all day yesterday as I made my way. Oh, there goes the kettle. Whew. Crispy morning here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, boots are froze solid. I won't be getting my feet into those until they thaw out. What do you think, Zach? Just like the ice block, but uh, I'll let them thaw out by the fire, and uh, the morning sun will get a hold of them too. So, eh, they should be okay in an hour. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't easy to get up this morning. 
Uh, had a couple big days. Uh, I got around 35 kilometers in so far. And, uh, you know, things were frozen solid this morning. My boots were frozen solid, my bag. So, uh, you know, it was a tough, tough morning to get up to. And uh, not to mention uh, having a blister around the size of a, a toonie for us Canadians. Uh, that's on the back of my left heel. So a little patch job like that. Had a piece of mole skin, cut a hole in the middle of it the size of the blister. And, uh, and then once I got that down, I place another piece of mole skin over the top. And once I get my sock on, that should give me a little uh, friction prevention anyways, so I don't feel the pain as much uh, on my daily John. Ah, it looks all right. We'll give it a go. Held up yesterday, anyways. These are the little things that give me delays in the morning, but uh, they got to be done, and it's a very important part of the routine. So you can't uh, you can't miss these things. You got to patch them up, and it makes everything that much more enjoyable. Finally up in the high country here now, and uh, man, it's pretty sweet. Not too many trees going on up here. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of stunted uh, growth, fern, spruce, tuckmore, and the like. As you can see, some doozy mountains behind me there, and uh, they are the hills that are just behind Mica Pond. So it's dandy. There's more beauty behind me. And uh, that's wide open, barren area up here. Yeah, so I'm uh I'm about 1,700 uh, feet above sea level at the moment now, so it's a uh, it's a big change from uh, where I started in Robinson's at sea level, and uh, it's a pretty big accomplishment to get this far. What do you think, Zach? That's the view. So that's the Long Range Mountains over there, looking great, and uh, yeah, they're pretty rugged, and they're they're cut up and down. Uh, for as far as the eye can see But just beautiful beautiful uh, mountains to have here on the west coast of Newfoundland Reaching the top of these long range mountains put us at the highest point of the expedition and it was all downhill from here to the Burgio Highway.
Uh, it's important Saku gets the water in with his food. Uh, he doesn't really like drinking from streams, and but uh, if I put it in with his food, uh, he gets it that way. After near 50 kilometers in three days, we take a break on the fourth and explore the area. Firewood was my primary source of fuel on this trip. Isobutane was carried for seldom convenience and emergency only. No matter how hard winter gripped the mountains, spring was prevailing. As you can tell, the, uh, the river mouths are starting to open up and uh, it's only a matter of time before the small gullies and uh, even ponds are going to be open. Uh, and snow is starting to disappear as well. And, I mean, that's not going to make pulling the sled any easier. I want to get going and get to that Burjo Highway. I got around 50 kilometers and uh, and there is some rain coming, uh, it looks like, in around four days, maybe three or four days. So uh, before that hits, I want to get there and, uh, you know, and then I can think about the next stage. Day five here in the going, just great. Uh, the sun hasn't broke out yet. Uh, we're around 10 a.m. I've been on the move since 8.30. And uh, ah, the snow is hard as a rock. So uh, makes things a lot more forgiving versus when the sun's out and you're sinking down uh, three or four inches in the snow every time you take a step. So I'm grateful for conditions today. I'm just following the ridge lines here now in between uh, mountain tops and I got a pretty steep embankment. Come here, Sack. Ah, uh, what do we got here? I just popped into uh, just a small patch of trees here uh, in this desolate western barren, and uh, it's the only birch tree I've seen. So uh, I bet my bottom dollar that uh, no one's ever peeled a couple scraps of birch off this baby. The thing is, I may end up having a campsite tonight. Uh, all along here, it's tough to find these wooded areas, so uh, it makes it a lot easier. When I do find the dry sticks, 
but I got some birch bark to get it going. I don't got to mess around uh, uh, with shavings and all that good stuff. Now I do have some uh, some reserve in my uh, in my pack down on the sleigh, but uh, I'd only use that uh, in really wet conditions or emergencies only. Ah, uh, the snow picked up a little bit, and uh, it's coming down now a little heavier, so. We're going to take a quick stop under this little canopy of trees, hey Saku, and uh, have a little fire. What is that thing, Saku? What is it? It's like a mushroom spruce dwarf tree. Yeah, look at this thing. Everything is gone but the top of her. I've never seen nothing like that before. Geez, amazing how we grow like that. Look at the rest of them around here. Right? And this one grows like that. April 23rd, shirts, sure t-shirt weather, but I'm out here now, it's probably plus seven or eight. Uh, add on the big sweat I'm working up, and uh, geez, had to get the tarp off. Whew, beauty, can you believe it? Look at me. I'm in these conditions right now. Pure winter by the looks of it. And I'm just trekking along with the sled, with the jersey off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is sick. Ah, uh, we got what looks like to be uh, some old coyote tracks. Uh, not sure how fresh. We had a bit of snow earlier, so could have been last night. Uh, Seth was investigating what he think, bud. Uh, he don't like the looks of it. Uh, just walking up here to uh, the headwaters of the Robinson River. So this is where the river starts and makes its way down to the ocean. Of course, down by that ocean is where I started the trip uh, five days ago, so. Hey, that's another accomplishment off the list and uh, just one step closer to the Burgio Highway. This neat little rock structure was too good to be true. It certainly seemed mysterious. Another nice morning here in the western interior. It's a bit crisp, that's okay. At the Lloyds River. This river runs down from further up in the hills. Man, there's a lot of snow in this western country, let me tell you. Went out for a morning leak. Look at the snow <laughs> hole I just fell into. I'm up to my chest right now. Lucky for sure. So you really got to be careful. I didn't have my snowshoes on. I'm out with my sneakers on in the morning, and uh, I'm up to my to my chest here in snow. Now I got to get myself out of here. So see if I can put my camera somewhere and <laughs> my tree climb out of this, this racket. Tree wells are caused by air pockets under the snow surrounding, you guessed it, a tree. These wells account for 20% of winter backcountry deaths. Often skiers or snowshoers fall in head first cool. and unable to move, suffocate before help arrives. In this situation, I was very lucky. Ah, great way to start the day though. Don't wake you up in a hurry. <laughs> so will the sunrise. Holy smokes.
Saku, stop eating those coals. Ah, uh, looks like I must get the fire going, I guess. Yeah, I'm just stuffing a bit of snow in the kettle to mix with the about an inch of water I got left in there from last night. Uh, reason being is I lost my damn path. I had this kettle in another path and uh, I re reached over the river yesterday and the current whew, took the pot right in my hand. Uh, just a combination of fatigue and uh, uh, tired from you know a long day yesterday I think and just boom, lost her. So uh, I don't really want to take that chance again. I was gonna go with one pot originally, funny enough, and uh, anyhow, I ended up taking two just because of the convenience and where I had to heat some stuff up from Saku and it just saves time. But uh, hey, I guess uh, it was meant to be, one pot for now anyways. I'll show you Lloyd's where, uh, where I lost the pot to. So it's a bit sketchy down here when you walk out on the river and uh, it's, it's starting to open up but it's not completely open, so. So right down there by those tracks is where I reached over and uh, as it is, I mean I was a little suspect uh, leaning over that edge hoping that uh, the snow bank wouldn't let go and I'd fall in the river. Although it's not very deep, but I tell you right now, it's not very warm either. So uh, I don't want to take the chance going back down over there today. The decision today is uh, should I stay or should I go? Uh, a lot of that falls on Saku. And, uh, you know, Saku's only a puppy, right? He's nine months old and more than capable of handling these situations. But uh, he needs to be eased into it. You know, with Saku, Saku can't talk to me. He can't tell me how he's feeling. Uh, I just got to look for signs, right? And uh, I found this morning uh, he didn't really want to get up. And uh, that's the decision today. I think we're going to stick around camp and give Saku an opportunity to rest up. No harm done. Beautiful sight here on the side of the Lloyds River. Yeah, the wind's picking up here now out on the side of Lloyds River. I got the uh, tent tied down in a couple extra spots. Uh, one being right here, and another one on the other side. One thing I did do just then is tie on the sled. So I wouldn't want a gust of wind to come by and take that thing. That's pretty light. I'd say if that weighs five pounds, that's pushing it. But uh, yeah, so we have a little storm brewing. Big fire. 